Hi everyone, my name is Leo, uh, and I'm here to talk about Scala parsing in general, specifically in Scala with Scala parser combinators. So it's a quick talk, it's a lightning talk, so it's just going to be presenting the problem, the high level idea of parser combinators in Scala specifically, and then a simple example and a slightly more complex real world example. So let's just dive into it. Um, I'm not going to go into the debate right now of whether and where to use DSLs. Let's just assume for the sake of discussions that we do want to use a domain-specific language and it's useful. My claim is that it is and we actually see it in a lot of places. But this, is, this goes actually beyond just user-facing DSLs. This is actually for parsing in general where we need to parse some kind of messages usually or all kinds of files that are not necessarily in some well-known standard format like XML or JSON. Specifically in the um, context of DSLs, we need to make a small distinction between internal versus external DSLs, which is useful in our context. Internal DSLs are basically DSLs that are um, defined on, on top of some kind of a host language, right? They are basically a subset of that host language and therefore they are parsed and therefore compiled with that language with the limitation that they are a subset of that language's syntax, usually. Um, external DSLs are actually domain-specific languages where we define some kind of a language, the syntax, the grammar, completely decoupled from any other language. It's more robust, it allows us more expressiveness, but then, of course, we are left with actually parsing it. And this is what I'm going to talk about right now because I think they're also more useful. Now, the problem of parsing is, of course, nothing new. Basically, it's a problem of turning a stream of characters, a string, into something that's more useful in the context of our program, usually an object model that we can do something with, okay? And we have, you know, it's an old problem. We have a lot of ways to do it, starting from very simple, straightforward ways, like splitting a string and regular expression up to uh, parser generators, if you remember, and even handwritten parsers which are more robust, they handle errors better, they integrate, but the overhead of starting them, et cetera, is, is a lot bigger than just doing string, uh, string split, for example, which is, on the other hand, a lot more fragile. So the goal here that I want to show you how to achieve, and I think is, is to have a robust parser, but that integrates well into uh, our program, specifically in Scala. So, Parser combinators, what's the idea of parser combinators? It's actually a fairly simple idea. Uh, given that we have a set of, let's, for lack of a better term, parsing functions, which are basically functions from a stream into something else that is more useful to us in the context of our program. So given that we have a set of these functions, and we're gonna see concrete examples, uh, we can then combine them, these functions, using other functions, into something that's more useful, that gives us uh, more complicated structures, more uh, complicated object models, okay? Now, this idea is not unique to Scala. It's not even new. Um, it's, we have libraries for that in other languages, in Java, and uh, I think even C Sharp, and, and others as well. Even in Scala, there are more than, uh, there's more than one library to do that. But actually, in Scala, it was part of the standard library up to 2.11, I believe, and then in 2.11, it was actually removed, the, the, the standard library for that. But it's still available, and this is, uh, so it's still available, it's still evolving, and still used, and we can still use it, and this is the library I'm going to show today. And this is sort of just to, you know, to ground the idea a bit more, the theoretical idea. This is sort of the hello world of parsing. Let's say I want to parse this simple word and a number, like a word and how many times it appears, and I have this object model here called word frec, which is basically a tuple of a string and an int. And then I want to use it in my program in such a way. So just please parse this string, and of course, assuming I'm successful, do something with it. And this match reference is actually of this type. And this is what I want to achieve. And with parser combinators, again, the specific Scala uh, standard library, uh, this is how to achieve it, okay? And this is basically just a class with a few functions in it, uh, methods basically where we, I, we, get, we do a parser that, does, that identifies a word, another one that identifies a number and actually turns them into an integer, and then 
another function that actually combines them together, saying that these two appear in a sequence. I have to have exactly one word and exactly one number right after it, okay? And this is basically the idea, but it's a very simple uh, example, but it already demonstrates the, uh, the basic pattern that you'll see in more complicated examples where we define the, si the simple parsing function, we map them into something more meaningful and then combine them. And now to a something a bit more, um, an, an actual real world example, a bit more involved, I, I work at Actimize, okay, and in Actimize we do financial, we don't do financial crime, we fight financial crime. And uh, as part of that, <laughs> I'm on record here, so. Uh, as part of that, um, uh, we do a lot of data profiling, okay? So we develop, uh, we have a, a data profiling engine. It's actually quite robust, do all kinds of aggregations and mappings. I'm not going to go into it. And it actually works well. One of the uh, key requirements is that it has to be customizable by our clients, professional services, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it works well. The problem is that the interface to actually define all those profiles, et cetera, et cetera, is using uh, an XML. And these XMLs can be very heavy. And this is just a simple example of a rather simple profile defined. And this is already 115 lines long to define a fairly simple profile. We wanted to achieve something similar. It's kind of hard to see, but this is actually the exact same profile, which was 115 lines long in 32 lines. And of course, we can debate it, but trust me, it's a lot more uh, readable and useful to have it this way uh, in this kind of domain-specific language. This is an example from the actual code of the model classes, all the objects model that defines the profile, the metadata, and the definitions of the profile. The main point here, these are just plain old Scala objects that were developed regardless of the actual profile parsing definition. So it integrates very well with our existing, you know, um, um, Scala or Java, if you want, uh, libraries and code. And this is the actual parser. Well, it's not all of it. The whole parser is basically around 200 lines long. And it's, it's, it's again, it's a simple Scala class. It appears right next to the model classes. And this is my main point. It actually integrates very well. So there is no setup. I don't know how many of you have done work with parser generators. There's a lot of overhead that you need to do. And in this case, it's fairly simple. And it's, again, the same pattern where we define the keywords up here, that def you know, the, the parser functions that define the keywords. And then we start combining them into more and more complicated structures that eventually define the syntax. So, what we've seen, we talked about parsing, specifically for DSLs, but even beyond that. And, you know, what, it's, an, it's an important problem. And the problem is that building a parser is either very simple uh, and, you know, uh, low entrance, but then very fragile, or if you want to have something more robust, there's a high entry barrier and sometimes uh, a, a very steep learning curve. Whereas with parser combinators, you can do a rather simple implementations, quickly go into action, so to speak, and just parse away even, uh, and, and still gain a very robust parser. Thank you very much.